So without further ado, I'll introduce our South America director, Laura Cahill. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Uncovering the Amazon and Pantanal. Uh, my name is Laura Cahill. I'm the South America Program Director. Um, and today we're going to talk about the Amazon and Pantanal regions in Brazil, uh, where they are, how to explore these regions, and some of the possibilities of combining these regions with other areas in Brazil. Um, Again, as, J as Jonathan said, please be sure to, to enter any of your questions on the right-hand side of the screen as we're going along, and then we'll set aside some time uh, for a Q&A session. Um, so I just want to introduce myself and Doug. I've been working in travel for over eight years, specializing in both Latin America and Asia. Um, I started working in Wildland, uh, with Wildland in 2016 on our South Asia trip. Um, and have um, in the last the six last months now transitioned back to my roots working in working South American South adventures. American adventures. Um, so we are very fortunate to have um, Doug Simonis here uh, speaking with us today from our Seattle office. Um, Doug has traveled um, to more than over 40 countries and five continents and loves uh, living and guiding in Brazil. Um, he's turned his passion for exploring Brazil into a career uh, of guiding and is always searching for new ways um, to, sh to show travelers his homeland um, in the best way possible. Um, so just to give you a brief introduction into Wildland Adventures as a company, um, we offer trips all around the world, uh, mostly designing private custom itineraries for couples, families, friends of all ages, um, and authenticity is our hallmark. Um, so in popular destinations like Brazil, um, we avoid the more resort, resort hotel properties um, and group tour destinations um, and focus more on remote, authentic experiences, including small eco lodges like you will see today in this presentation. Um, of course, everywhere in the world, uh, guides are of the foremost consideration for us. Um, so we are happy to have someone like Doug with us. Um, and Brazil is obviously no different. So we, we have good naturalists, both um, knowledgeable of the area and of the animals, um, but they're also very personable, um, all who really want to introduce you as a traveler to their country, um, not just nature, but also making genuine connections with local people um, and ex experiencing daily life wherever we travel. Um, so I'll, without further ado, I'll just go ahead and hand it over to Doug and he can start getting into um, the details of the Amazon and the Pantanal. Thanks, Laura. And if you could mute while Doug talks, I think that'll be shatter. Okay. Uh, thanks, Laura, for the introduce. Uh, thanks, uh, JB, also for the opportunity to be here uh, with uh, all of you. Uh, well, as Laura said, um, we're going to talk about Amazon and uh, Pantanal, two iconic um, um, reserve, uh, sorry, uh, landscapes of Brazil and ecosystems in Brazil. So uh, let's start with Amazon, which is uh, more famous than Pantanal. So Amazon, as we can see on the map, uh, covers a uh, huge area of Brazil and South America. 40% of the Brazilian uh, area is covered by Amazon, uh, but it, it is also part of nine other countries in South America uh, and is responsible uh, for 20% of all fresh water in the world. So it's a very important ecosystem. All the world is like worried about this ecosystem and once you visit this ecosystem, and um, it's really rich in um, wildlife and also flora, especially flora. Uh, and Amazon is a, like a rainforest, so we have two seasons. We, we say dry season and wet season, but actually when we talk about dry, uh, actually locally they say that the, the, the wet season rains all day and uh, dry season rains every day a little bit but uh, it's better to be visiting uh, amazon during the dry season july to december when the rivers are a little bit lower less rain 
and uh, also cooler. So uh, that's when we recommend to visit uh, Amazon. It's also possible to visit from January or uh, to, to June, but we prefer to recommend from July to December, okay? So uh, I will show you now some uh, flora and fauna, because when we think about Amazon, uh, some people think a lot about uh, wildlife, but because of the density of the forest, um, wildlife is not like the high uh, light of the area. We can also see wildlife for sure, as we're going to show you right now. But the, the Amazon is about um, enjoying the, I mean, feeling the, the nature, you know, so big trees, um huge rivers up to 25 kilometers wide so local communities and uh so that's why it's about more feeling the amazon than about uh seeing wildlife but of course we can also see wildlife as tucanos as the pink dolphin which is um one of the icon iconic animals of the amazon so uh they are they were they are still in danger but like local social project, local community projects are helping to to preserve there. Uh, so as you can see here, these are some islands in the middle of the Negro River, which is upriver from the meeting of the waters. And as you can see here, it's huge river. It looks like an ocean. It's difficult to understand that this is just a river. Okay. So caimans, we can see them especially at night. Uh, so it's a kind of animal that is pretty much. Um, easy to see. Uh, the lily ponds, which is like uh, uh, iconic flora from Amazon, especially in um, Solimões River, which is one of the tributaries that um, becomes Amazon after the meeting of the waters. The sloth, so this is also easy to see there. Um, this picture shows something that for me is really nice. Uh, we can see uh, the the jungle uh, uh, brief, you know. So and that's what I, what I, what I feel when I see a picture like that. Uh, some of the hotels they have like a tower to 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 look around. So this uh, fog that we can see almost every morning or every afternoon, it's uh, usually uh, for me the the symbol of that the 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 bush the the jungle is breathing, you know. So this is a um, uh, wakari, okay? So it's a monkey that is uh, in one of the, that is a, the, the brand of one of the lodges that I will show you uh, further on. And the trees that are usually huge uh, in Amazon. So as I say, Amazon is the land of superlatives. So huge rivers, huge trees, um, huge area. So when we walk uh, into the jungle, we can see these trees and we can see the power of the nature uh, on these uh, walks. Uh, what we can do uh, once we are uh, in Amazon, okay? So spot nightlife, uh, night uh, wildlife, that's something that we can do by boat or walking, okay? So that's one of the things that we usually do there. Uh, we paddle canoes. So the experience to be paddling canoes in the jungle is really nice because this is the way how the locals uh, move around, okay? So um, I say that in the Amazon, we don't need to pave roads because they have already the roads, like which, is, which are the rivers and the tributaries. So that's how all the local communities move around by speedboat nowadays, but most of, lots of the time also by paddling boat as the one that you can see in this picture. Uh, visiting local communities is an interesting activity because um, it's hard to imagine how does these people live uh, so remote. So once we visit them, we can see how they live, what they eat. And this is one of the things that they do in the jungle, which is the flower from the manioc. Manioc is an important source of uh, food for them. And the flower is one of the things that they do um, a lot, just for their own consumption, but also to sell to other villages or in big cities. 
Uh, piranha sport fishing is one of the things that also we can do. It's a uh, piranha is a fish that is like in the imaginary of the people people's mind. So it's nice to fish it. It's a sport fishing. So it is catch and release. And we we can uh, the, the guides our guides can explain about this like creature that is in people's mind and it's not like an evil or something like that it's like an important uh, animal for the area and there are several species of piranha in in um, in amazon so talking about where we can go um we are talking we, I, I will show you here some lodges so four lodges that we work with in the area so this is where they are located so on the left upper side we have uh, Wakari Lodge okay so this is a more remote one uh, where the Wakari monkey uh, can be seen then on the center on the orange um, spot we can see Juma Lodge uh, then we have an Avilenia's Lodge and south we have Cristalino Lodge okay Cristalino is not in this is the only one that is not in the state of Manaus and it's the only one that the entrance um, airport is not Manaus as well, okay? So I will talk about them and how different they are. So Anavillena's Lodge, with, uh, together with Cristalino, are the two best accommodations in terms of um, like hotel, okay? So it's a very charming hotel, very small. Uh, the, the access to this hotel is pretty easy. We drive um, there but it's right uh, on the riverbank of uh, uh, Negro River, okay? So they have a swimming pool, they have very charming bungalows, as you can see on this picture on the far uh, right. Uh, it's only um, 20 chalets in the jungle, but from one chalet you don't see the other one. And uh, they have uh, the same, I mean, the, the tours that they have in each lodge is pretty much similar so it's uh, the activities on them are pretty much the same ones that I, I mentioned with a little uh, small difference between them okay so this is negro uh juma lodge uh is one that is on i don't know the name in english but on palafitas so it's uh stilts, stilts. Um, it's not la, like uh, as charming as uh, Anavillanas and Cristalino that you're going to see further. Uh, but the good point of Juma Lodge is that it's a little bit more remote. You get there by boat and on the way in and out, you have the opportunity to stop at the meeting of the waters. So if you go to Anavillanas, we recommend you to stay one night at least in Manaus to visit the meeting of the waters. But for Juma Lodge, it's not necessary because the way in and out, you stop by by boat on the meeting of the waters, okay? And it's more remote. And Juma Lodge is, is very nice because they've got um, sustainable because they don't have energy getting there. So they have solar panels. They uh, heat the water with so, uh, sun as well. They treat all their water so they can, uh, they throw the water back to the river totally cleaned and they have a floating swimming pool so uh, if you don't feel comfortable to swim in the river they have a swimming pool that is floating in the river um, um, like with a uh, submerged uh, fence so you are protected and then for people who doesn't feel comfortable to swim in the river it's there's a possibility to do that okay so it's a hotel that we like to work with and it's also very small 21 bungalows only uh, then we have Cristalino, which is um, the entrance port is uh, out of Floresta, so it's the best option to combine with North Pantanal, that we're going to talk a little bit further about Pantanal. And um, the difference also between Cristalino and the other ones in, in close to Manaus is that in this particular area, the rivers are not as huge as the rivers in um, Manaus. Um, but uh, in certain ways, you can be closer to um, the wildlife. And in this case, in this particular lodge, their uh, guides are very oriented to bird watching. So for bird watchers, is a paradise for bird watchers in Pantanal. Okay. 
and also small one, a, only 18 apartments. And finally, the Wakari Lodge is a floating lodge. Uh, it's, a, it's more basic than the other three, but the good thing about this place, it's owned by the local community. So it's at the beginning was a social, it was a NGO project to develop the area. And nowadays it's owned by the local community. And it's where you can see the Wakari, which is that monkey that I showed you. And they have some projects with uh, jaguars to protect the jaguars in the area. It's not easy to see jaguars in Amazon because of the density of the forest. But um, the, the guides, the local guides can explain what they do, can show footprints. And uh, if you're lucky, maybe even seeing uh, the jaguar, which is uh, not easy here. OK, so these are the four options that we recommend to do in Brazil. Uh, we have also some cruises, uh, small cruises, private cruises. But uh, we thought it was longer to talk about them today. OK, so then Laura can uh, explain to you uh, if you decide to go to Brazil. So this is about, this is all about Amazon. Well, then going back to Pantanal, as you can see, the light, uh, not the light green, but you, you can see the map on the north of Brazil, this is Amazon. So Pantanal is uh, very close. It's connected to the, um, to the Amazon in certain ways, uh, as you can see in the map. And Pantanal, uh, the characteristic of Pantanal is that it's a wetland. So it's surrounded by mountains to all on, on all the sides, okay? And all the water from these mountains come down. And because it's a really flat area, it floods certain point of the year and it dries out in the other part of the year. And so there is three seasons that I will explain later. Um, uh, when it's flooding, when it's, when, when it's flooded, when it's dry, and when it's in, on transition, okay? Uh, it covers two states, uh, Mato Grosso and Mato Grosso do Sul. Um, and Pantanal, different than Amazon, is the place in Brazil to see wildlife, okay? Uh, talking a little bit about, uh, as you can see in these pictures, is three different uh, landscapes. So the left um, image is when it's flooded, and uh, we call Shea from November to March, when we do not recommend you to be there. Okay, actually, it's late March, um, so sorry, late November to uh, March, uh, especially December, January, and February. Uh, it's hard to see, to see wildlife and also very hot and also lots of mosquitoes on this time. Uh, actually, talking about mosquitoes, getting back to Amazon, all the all the hotels that we work and most of the hotels in Amazon, they are closed, which are really black in their color, very acid, so almost no mosquitoes. The people get impressed how low number of mosquitoes we've got in Amazon. Uh, and uh, for who are worried with some like uh, tropical disease like malaria, it's a malaria so, like almost no mosquitoes in the area. In Pantanal, during the, um, this time from late November to March, it's, an era, it's, it's a time of the year which is really hot and lots of mosquitoes, okay? Then between April to June, it's when the water is going down. So we call it uh, Bazanchi, is the drainage time. It's already good to see animals, uh, less hot and less mosquitoes also. Okay. And the vegetation, uh, because of the floods of the, the summertime, it's very green. So I like this period of the time to go to Pantanal. Uh, but for people who want to have better chances to see mammals, it's better to go after this drainage uh, season. But I like to go at the end of this drainage season. It's nice because very beautiful, the flora of Pantanal. And also we can see some animals. And then the high season and the best season to see wildlife, especially the jaguars, are from July to October when it's dry. So all the, the waters went down, so the river banks are, the, the rivers are back to their river, uh, river, um, well, the river banks, and we have some lagoons in the area. So because we have less water in the area, 
then the animals have to go to the to drink water so that's why it's easier to see the wildlife in Pantanal and it's when we have less mosquitoes sometimes can be even cold uh, I mean when I say cold I mean up down to 12 13 degrees Celsius in like very rare periods of time but it's possible to have um, these kind of cold there and then uh, the the area that we are covering now we call North Pantanal. Actually, Pantanal is only one, but we have two main entrances, which is uh, Cuiabá, which is in the state of Mato Grosso, and Campo Grande, which is in the state of Mato Grosso do Sul. So that's the only reason that we divided in North and South Pantanal. Uh, um, and we, we decided to cover today uh, North Pantanal for two reasons. One, because we can combine with Cristalino, which is like Amazon, as I mentioned to you before, and uh, because it's the, the area where it's easier nowadays to see the jaguars, okay? So, uh, wildlife in Pantanal is really rich, okay? So, we can see anteaters, we can see lots and lots of really nice birds, uh, otters, giant otters, uh, tapirs, uh, the jaguar, which is like, this is a picture from a, a wild and alumni client. So uh, now it's getting more and more easy to see jaguars in some areas of Pantanal. Tucanos, lots of tucanos, uh, biguas, um, uh, caimans. So we see lots of caimans and also the jaguars, love to see them as well and actually hunting them. Okay, this is a picture that was taken by a client as well in Pantanal. So activities that we can do in Pantanal are horseback riding, uh, canoe trips on the rivers, jeep photography tours, <coughs> um, open vehicle usually, uh, hiking on walks where we can just like um, get closer to the, to the bush, uh, speedboat rides, that is the way that we use mostly to find uh, jaguars on the riverbanks. And this is how close we can be on a jaguar, from a jaguar. Okay, so this is something that is uh, very easy to be done in Pantanal, in some areas of Pantanal right now. Okay, so uh, on this area of Pantanal, we work with uh, two hotels to see Jaguars, which is Hotel Bahia Zinha and Porto Jofre, and Araras Eco Lodge for land-based program to complement, uh, to, com to, be to combine with the Jaguar trips in Porto Jofre or Bahia Zinha. So as you can see here in the map, we have Araras Lodge, um, almost in the middle of the picture, Bahia Zinha, and Porto Jofre is a little bit south of it. Uh, Araras is like the most charming accommodation in North Pantanal, okay? So all the activities there are land-based. I mean, some uh, we have one canoe trip there, um, but we don't have speed boats or rivers around, right? So uh, it's also small, uh, 19 uh, rooms, um, and it's one of the bases uh, uh, that we use in, in, in North Pantanal. Then we have Porto Jofre and Bayazinha, which are two accommodations, very basic accommodations, but are places from where we can see uh, the Jaguar. So the focus of these two places is to see the Jaguar. So the idea is to live every day on speed boats uh, to search for the Jaguar. Usually we recommend at least two nights to um, stay in one of the places. Um, minimum, uh, three nights it's ideal because then we have at least two full days to search for the jaguars and uh, the difference between the two areas, actually the accommodation is pretty much the same as you can see the picture is quite basic but uh, in Porto Jofre, uh, for those people that have been or have heard about Africa, it's our Krugno Park, so it's a place with lots of people, not only this hotel is there, and this is not a small hotel, actually it's a little bit bigger than the other ones, 28 comfortable rooms, but there are other hotels around. So it's a national park that uh, every day at least 15, 20, sometimes 40 speedboats go on the river to search for jaguars. So what happens? If one of them find a jaguar, 
they send a radio message to the others, and then these boats come to see the Jaguar. So what happens, as it happens also in Kruger National Park, uh, uh, um, the sites is private site, okay? But we have much more chances to see Jaguars in this area because we have more people searching for them. So an average site, uh, a number of individuals that can be seen in a uh, three nights program, each of 10 to 11 uh, different individuals in three nights program, okay? Which, and the maximum number that we've got in the last five years, it's 19 uh, different individuals, and the minimum, it's, it's usually at least four or five, okay? So it's very easy to see. When you go to Bayazinha, which is in another area of Pantanal, um, there is only this hotel there, but smaller, so less people on, um, on the rivers searching for the jaguars. And also, uh, this area is closer to the border with Amazon, so the bush is a little bit more dense than in Porto Jofre. But when we see a jaguar, we see it almost alone. So it's, the experience can be deeper, but um, the number of sites, the average number of sites on a three nights program would be uh, around uh, four to five, minimum two, maximum nine that we had in the last five years. So it's, uh, I know that it's a hard decision, but um, there's two different experiences to be, to be done. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope I could help you to better understand uh, what uh, Amazon and Pantanal is about. And I hope to see you all in Brazil. Laura. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, let you know our ultimate Jaguar and wildlife adventure combines both of these regions. We do about five days in the Pantanal. Uh, we do four days in the Amazon and then a quick visit to uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, we can, of course, customize this trip to add any of the other destinations in Brazil, like Iguazu Falls or Sao Paulo. Um, so definitely let me know if you're interested. Um, it's also now easier for uh, U.S. citizens to um, get a visa for Brazil. Um, it's a it's an e-visa now, so you can do it online. It takes about three to five days. It now only costs fifty dollars, and it lasts for two years. So if you head to the Pantanal, you fall in love with it, and you have to go back, you can go back and and not have to get uh, a new visa. Um, so I'll I'll turn it over, I think, to Jonathan, um, and um, see if anybody has any questions for us. Um, otherwise, um, you can uh, reach me. Um, I think this next slide has my contact information. Um, so you can reach me by email or give me a call, uh, and I'm happy to help you guys uh, work out a uh, Brazil adventure to the Amazon and Pantanal. Questions. Uh, right on the right hand side, we have a chat box, and Doug and Laura would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. So we have a question here. What is the food like in Brazil? Do you want to take that one, Doug? Okay. Um, it depends on each area of Brazil. Okay. So in these two areas, uh, for Amazon, uh, it's very much um, oriented. I mean, related with uh, fish, especially river fish, uh, and uh, also some indigenous community culinary. And in Pantanal, uh, it's the, the basic of uh, the, the base of the food there is neat, especially barbecue. But uh, nowadays, uh, these hotels, all of them, they are very well prepared to receive uh, any kind of dietary, like vegetarians or other or other stuff. So 
Uh, the base of the, the, the food is meat or fish in these two areas, but for people who doesn't eat meat, it's also very easy to handle. And then we have another one. What's the best time of the year to travel to Brazil? Okay, uh, that's a tricky uh, question because Brazil is like the same size of US, so it depends where. I say if you want to cover different areas of Brazil, uh, spring and autumn, it's the best time. So I would say to avoid uh, winter and summer uh, because uh, it's like can be streams and also if our high season, which is like um, holiday school. So if you have time, if you don't need to go on um, on a holiday time, spring and autumn. So September, uh, October, November, and then in the first semester, March, April, and May for me are the best periods of the time. Uh, how long would you recommend a trip to be? Was before here. Uh, that's something, uh, uh, Brazil is huge, as I said, so I would say at least two weeks, that's what I recommend a minimum. If you have three weeks, it's perfect, you can cover a lot of Brazil, but 14 days is a good period of time to be, but it's also possible to visit in less time, it's just a matter, but if you have less time, I recommend you to concentrate in one region and do not be flying too much around because the flights can be long. Uh, do you lead any trips to Guantanamo from Campo Grande? No. Sorry, sorry. Uh, been there. So I couldn't understand. Uh, I've been there in South Pantanal, and we have trips to South Pantanal as well, and we can combine them with Bonito uh, for sure. It's the same airport, very easy to combine them, and Bonito is a good combination with South Pantanal because Bonito is a place where we have some soft adventure, so like snorkeling down the rivers, some like uh, very easy river rafting and some caves, so it's a very good combination for that. Uh, so Connie and Ren have the same question, so let's just go for Ren's question. Here. Okay, I imagine wildland trips to Brazil can be of any size, from one or two people upwards, but what's the typical size group to Amazon and Pantanal? Okay, so um, wildland does the trips uh, uh, on FIT basis, so they quote and they customize for each client. Um, some activities, for example, in North Pantanal, uh, on the lodge, specifically on these places in the lodge, uh, once you are inside a lodge, you are with a group of people uh, between 8 to 10 maximum with one guide, okay? So usually eight, but some of the activities is private also. So when you go to see Jaguars, uh, then it's private. But if you are in Arara's Lodge or Juma Lodge or Navilena's Lodge, you are in a group at most 10, usually around eight maximum. Well, I think that is all our questions. Once again, thank you to everyone who came. Uh, Laura will be sending around a follow-up email with a recording of this webinar. So if you miss some things, don't worry, you have a chance to go back. And yeah, I hope everyone gets a chance to go to Brazil. And thank you so much again for joining us. Ciao.